Bravo coming back. Charlie Team Stamp. They let me in. <laughs> I applied, and to my great surprise, I was admitted. I was a classical pianist, grew up in a small town in Rhode Island. I had a love of film and music at a very young age. If you got into NEC, you, you had something. That's one thing I remember hearing about NEC when I was a kid. They had an incredibly talented student body. So when I got in, I was, I was quite uh, humbled and, and excited. I remember being a little intimidated when my teacher said, you do know you're expected to practice six to seven hours a day. And I don't know if I'd ever done that in my 17 years of current living, so I had to kind of up my game a bit. I was very small fish when I got here. Bob Seeley, the late Bob Seeley, I found him to be extraordinarily generous and talented. He actually got me interested in electronic music and, and the idea of its merging with more traditional uh, sonorities and so forth. I quite enjoyed his company. And Jacob Maxim, I mean, he was a profoundly great piano teacher. He was, he, he, he stuck with me. Played jazz piano on weekends to make money. I loved playing. I really did want to get into scoring at some point in my life, but uh, I knew that the education was profoundly important. That was one thing I did know, and that is the one thing that I got here at NEC was a rock solid education and an amazing experience. All I knew is that everything I was learning here, whether it was classical music or singing in the choir or arranging, certainly classical piano study, or even working in the audio department, those were all breadcrumbs along the way that you pick up. You don't know how they're going to become of service to you later in your life, but I will say that even in the audio department, which was a work study gig to help pay tuition, that actually helped me transition into, into a line of work or to be around people that valued not only my musical skill but the fact that I had some technical knowledge. Would, would I have known working for the audio department that that was going to be of value to me later on in life? No. Am I grateful for it? Yes. I was working sort of in a product support in a more electronic support way but I still was honing my musical playing skills in Los Angeles and when people who I was visiting for the purposes of servicing their equipment realized that I could perform, like I was testing gear and they said, oh, you play, you know, I do, and then, uh, then I eventually got hired to do string arranging and I got hired to do playing on albums, and then I finally got a chance to score a little tiny Christmas movie starring Olivia Newton-John called A Mom for Christmas, and it was in conjunction with this other composer who, he knows I had never really scored anything the picture before, but he knew I had the skill set. In the 90s, there was a very popular TV show called The X-Files and The X-Files was by a composer named Mark Snow. He took a liking to me. He just said, you know, you, you seem to have some interest in this. I said, I do. And he gave me a shot at scoring and arranging some pieces for him on one of his other projects. He was extraordinarily generous to me, and that led to meeting the executive producer of a show who went on to make a show called 24, which you know, you don't know when you're making a pilot episode if it's going to be a, a hit show. I've certainly worked on shows that you'll never see. But 24 was one of the shows that just took. You didn't know it was going to be so popular, but you're grateful that it did. It is a series of relationships that keep forming, and you have to keep building on that, and you have to keep growing. You have to keep evolving as, a, as an artist. You can't rest on anything. Every composer in film, television, they all have their different ways of arriving into the gig. Everyone has a different story. Mine was through the training I got here. It was through certainly learning on the piano my own style, playing in jazz clubs. But the, the education I got here was, uh, <laughs> I mean, it was, it, it wouldn't have happened if I, if I hadn't gotten the education. I'm not just saying that because you're interviewing me. I, I really am not. But when I say I did go to the conservatory, it has a reputation. It, there is a reputation for this school and it's, it, it continues to grow and I'm very proud to say oh, I went to NEC.